Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Lawbaugh here. I hope you're all doing well and keeping busy as best you can. Uh, I thought I'd share a story with you today and this relates to um, the challenge that some of the principals have put out about keeping a journal during this time and I'll show you what Mr. Lawbaugh and I are doing uh, at our house in a minute. But this is called Rocket Writes a Story. It's by Tad Hills and it's in the Rocket series. Some of you might have heard the book Rocket Learns to Read. So here we go. This is our title page. You can see Rocket there and the little bird. That's his teacher. Rocket loved books. He loved to read them to himself or sit quietly by his teacher, the little yellow bird, as she read them aloud. Rocket even liked the way books smelled. When he opened a new book, it smelled like a place he'd never been to, like a friend he'd never met. The little yellow bird agreed. Books are inspiring. They make me sing. Rocket loved words too. After snack time, his teacher would say, Rocket, why don't you use that nose of yours to sniff out some new words? And off he'd go. He'd fetch some nice ones like buttercup and bug and feather and nest. I'm looking for words, Rocket would announce to anyone who would listen. There you can see the nest up there, the buttercup. Maybe we'll see those soon. Rocket always brought his words back to the classroom and wrote them down. The little yellow bird would help him spell the tricky one, ones, and then they'd hang them on their word tree. Sometimes the bird added her own words to the collection. This one is small, but I promise it'll come in handy, she said. It says up. Magnificent, chirped the little yellow bird once their tree was covered. Now what shall we do with all these splendid words? Rocket thought all afternoon. Then he had an idea. And look at all those words there. Rocket left school that day with a very waggy tail. I'm going to write a story, he declared to Fred and Emma. My story will be an adventure about the great wide world, he told a butterfly. I will use many words, he explained to Mr. Barker. Hello up there, he called as he passed the tree where he had found the word nest. I'm going to write a story. Day, Rocket returned to his classroom. It was time to begin. He looked down at the blank page and the blank page looked up at him, but no story would come. At snack time, Rocket gave up. I don't know what to write, he told his teacher. Don't worry, the little yellow bird replied. One of the hardest parts of writing is coming up with a good story. But it's one of the most fun, too. Perhaps you want to write about something you've seen. A bug? asked Rocket. Yes, sang his teacher. Stories need good characters. Or what about something that happened to you or, or something you really enjoy? My favorite stick, suggested Rocket. Of course, said the bird. Or you could write about something that inspires you. Inspires me? asked Rocket. Yes, something that excites you, the little yellow bird sang. Rocket took a walk and looked for inspiration. He thought about friends he knew and places he'd been. He stuck his nose high in the air and sniffed the gentle breeze. And there it was, a delightful smell of pine needles and feathers, inspiration. For the rest of the morning, he thought about feathers and pine needles, pine needles and feathers. That afternoon, he started to write. In the evening, Rocket followed the beautiful smell until he found himself at the tree with the nest. Hello again, he called into the branches. Is anyone home? He heard rustling from above, but no one answered. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I must tell you that you smell very nice, very inspiring. May I ask who you are? Still nothing. Perhaps I'll come back at a more convenient time, he said, and trotted off. That night, as Rocket watched the stars, he thought about feathers and a nest and a pine tree. He thought about his story and his collection of words. On his way to school the next day, Rocket was surprised by what he saw. A brand new word, he said, and it was already written down. It says, he tried to sound the word out, owl. 
came a quiet voice from the branches. It says, Owl, that's me. Thank you, Owl, Rocket called. I'm always looking for words, and this one's a beauty. Rocket ran all the way to his classroom. O-W-L, Owl. Now there's a word we don't hear every day, chirped the little bird. Only three letters, but what a word. It was a present, explained Rocket, and he added the new word to his story. So down here you can see the word owl written in little sticks that the owl made for Rocket. I'm writing a story about you, Rocket announced proudly to the owl next morning. The owl poked her head out of her nest, and for the first time, Rocket saw her friendly face. Her big brown eyes blinked below feathery tufts. About me, she asked softly. Would you like to come down and hear it? asked Rocket. Thank you, but I think I'll listen from my nest, the owl answered. So Rocket cleared his throat and began to read. Once there was an owl. She smelled like feathers and pine needles. She lived in a tree. The owl's eyes widened. Is there more? There will be, said Rocket. Each day, Rocket worked on his story. He wrote words down and crossed words out. When things weren't going well, were going well, he wagged his tail. When he didn't know what to write, he growled. Sometimes he drew pictures for his story or took a walk in the meadow for inspiration. The little yellow bird encouraged him. Stories take time, she'd say. She wanted to know more about Owl and ask Rocket questions. Why do you think the Owl wouldn't come down? What color is her beak? What does she do every day? Rocket wanted to know more about the owl, too. He visited her tree often and read her his story, which changed every day. The owl was captivated. And when Rocket stopped, she would always ask, then what happened? At last came the day Rocket knew that he was finished. What a fine story, chirped the little yellow bird after she read it. Rocket ran to the owl's pine tree. It's done, he called. Come listen. And so down and down came the owl till she was right beside Rocket. Then Rocket began to read. He read about an owl with friendly eyes and a beak the color of a buttercup. She lived in a nest high in a tree on the edge of a meadow and smelled like pine needles and feathers. She liked to nap in the daytime and listen to stories. Branch by branch, the owl came down from her nest, Rocket read. She was shy, but she was brave too. Suddenly, Rocket stopped. He wrote something on the paper, then began to read again. One day, the owl came all the way to the ground and became my friend. The owl blinked. Can there be one last sentence, she asked. Can you say, and the owl liked the story very much. What a perfect ending, said Rocket. And it was. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you're maybe trying to read and, and do some writing at home, playing outside and that sort of thing. And this may seem kind of silly, but this is Mr. Lava and I are kind of doing a little writing at home. On our calendar, we kind of write down what we've been doing each day so we can keep track of the days, hopefully counting down those days till we'll be back at school. So take care, stay safe, and wash your hands.